And let me segue effortlessly from Mr. Postman to Mr. Plummer. Joe Wurzelbacher was the unlikely hero of the American right. He popped up questioning Barack Obama about his small business tax policy during a campaign stop in Ohio. The Republican candidate, John McCain, then called him Joe the Plumber during the third presidential debate on October 15th this year, last year. Then the McCain-Palin campaign and the media later applied Joe the Plumber as a metaphor for middle-class Americans. It's the American dream, really. You can go from obscurity to superstardom. And he's such a star, he's now on the mother of all talk shows. Joe the Plumber, welcome. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Appreciate you having me. Terrific uh, that you uh, are on the show. You, you, you made a decisive intervention in the American presidential election. It looked, at least for a few days, but it didn't quite do it for McCain in the end. What do you put that down to, Joe? Uh, actually, just bad campaigning, to uh, be quite honest with you. The campaign uh, wasn't ran the best, and uh, you know Barack Obama actually ran an incredibly tight campaign. He um, was very uh, media-friendly, and um, uh, essentially that's what it came down to, I think. Now, as soon as you became famous, as inevitably happens, let me tell you, Joe, because when I became famous, the same thing happened to me. All sorts of people descend upon your personal life, and it was revealed that you, you weren't actually a plumber at all. Well, it was revealed that I was unlicensed in the state of Ohio, but as far as being a plumber, I assure you, I can fix any drain or water line that come down. Well, I've actually got a leaking pipe right now, Joe, so I wish you were here to prove that. But they also, <laughs> they also, thought, they also thought that it was a bit odd you were raising the tax issue because, hey, you hadn't been that regular in paying your taxes. Well, I'll be honest with you, um, that's one thing I didn't even know existed. So uh, in a couple of interviews, if you look at the early ones, I thank them for finding that out because I didn't even know. Uh, they do not send letters to you. So it wasn't like I was trying not to pay taxes. I mean, Uncle Sam will make sure you pay your taxes. There's no doubt about that. Um, so when I went to go refinance my house or try to sell it, it would have popped up its ugly head. So by them finding that out for me, they actually did me a favor. Now, they tried to run me through the mud for not doing it, but it wasn't something I did, you know, at, on purpose. Like, you know, I'm just not going to pay these, screw it. And I, I didn't even know I had them, to be very honest with you. Well, that's a very honest answer. Now, um, you've, you've moved on from plumbing. Now, tell us what you do now. Um, well, currently, I'm acting as a... Uh, of all things, and people can say it's silly or not, but I'm acting as a war co correspondent for a company called PJTV.com. PJ, as in pajamas? As in pajamas, exactly. <laughs> and do, do you have to appear in your pajamas on the nightly news? <laughs> well, the reason that, from what I understand, they came up with the name Pajamas Media is because it's essentially a bunch of bloggers, you know, a lot of Internet. It's Internet-based television. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they get up in the middle of the night or in the morning, they're still in their pajamas, and they get online. So, hence the name PJTV.com. Now, have you, are you developing any political ambitions yourself, Joe? I mean, you, you've got a voter recognition factor way beyond most of those that run for office. Uh, no, you know, I'm... Uh I'm, I'm too honest for politics. I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't do very well. The special interest groups wouldn't like me because uh, I would expose them as, a, as opposed to taking their money. Uh, the lobbyists wouldn't like me for the same reason. And uh, I mean, you kind of need those kind of people uh, to, you know, get enough money to even run for any kind of real office in America anymore. Well, if you don't mind me asking, have you made a few bucks at least out of your uh, your fame? Uh, I'm the famous broke person you know right now. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you can, you can be famous, but it doesn't necessarily mean the money's going to follow. Um, plus, if you do it with any kind of morals or values, then you really got to work hard for it. Uh, you know, initially when I was, uh, you know, first at the scene, you know, I do have a book out, and I was, uh, but initially, you know, I had, you know, 15 different people offering me a couple hundred thousand dollars, even up to a million dollars for my book rights. And I turned them all down because it was all a bunch of BS. They they wanted to write about stuff that was really irrelevant. You know, they didn't want to put anything out with any kind of real meat to it. And so I ended up going with a small publisher um, with just, uh, you know, he wanted to get out there and you know, talk about morals and values and doing the right thing when you're faced with it. 
Um, and so I went with him, no signing bonus, and we're working to bring the book out. So it's, it's just not falling from the sky yet. Um, what's it going to be called, and how will people get it, Joe? Well, right now... Um, just I'd, call it, I'd just call it Joe the Plumber if I was you. <laughs> Joe the well, Plumber. Actually, uh, the, uh, Joe the Plumber, the American Dream, or the Ordinary Joe, that sort of thing. I'd, I'd uh, trade on the, the way people know you. Well, and we did. It, actually, the book is out. It's out on the Internet. It's called Joe the Plumber Fighting for the American Dream. Well, there you are. That, I couldn't have put yeah. it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's uh, it's out on the Internet. That uh, You go to uh, my website. It's called secureourdream.com. Secureourdream.com. Yep, and you can purchase it there, but uh, it'll be out in the bookstores. I don't know internationally yet. Uh, publishers were still working on that, but as far as in the States, it's going to be available come the end of January. Now, Joe, you're in Israel as a war correspondent. Are you, uh, are you developing any expertise on the complexities of the Arab-Israeli issue? Well, you know, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, it's definitely complex, but at the same time, it's very simple. If Somebody's shooting at me, I'm going to shoot back at them. Yeah, that's exactly what the Palestinians have been saying for uh, a very long time, Joe. What's that? That if somebody's shooting at me, I'm going to shoot back. And if somebody takes my land and my home, I'm going to fight them. That's the sort of values you'd appreciate, surely. <laughs> well, you know... Ah, you see, Joe, everything in life depends at what side of the telescope you're looking through. I'd advise you to go and talk to the Palestinians, but it would be dangerous for your health if you were to do so now. And guess what? Israel wouldn't allow you anyway, Joe, because no reporters, whether for PJ TV or anyone else, is allowed in to the Gaza Strip. As of right now, you're absolutely right. But uh, not, to, not to get in an argument with you, sir, but uh, right now Israel is known as the nation. You know, it's, uh, you know, they, you know they're... Everybody knows Israel, and that's, you know, the Jews live here, and that's, that's where they're at. So let's get beyond that for a second. You know, the Gaza Strip has been lobbing missiles into the Israeli countryside, you know, killing people, and Israel has, is, you know, uh, taken decisive action and given it back to them. The media currently is, you know, with the Palestinians showing the tragedies that are happening over there, and they are tragic, and I don't, I don't dismiss that at all or discount it. However, that being said, um, Israel has every right to protect their people as well, and the media is not covering that. They're not talking about how the Israel schools around the Gaza Strip are closed down and how people... <laughs> you're, you're, are you're, you're, you're obviously watching a different media from me, Joe. Uh, but I want to, um, before we part company, probably for the last time, uh, ask you how you think Obama's going to do. He's only got what, a few days left to go before the village of Crawford in Texas gets its idiot back. How do you think Obama's going to do? Uh, how do I think he's going to do? Um, honestly, I have no clue on how he's going to do. I, I hope he does well, but, uh, you know, uh, he's the only voted president. There's no, there's no record on how he's going to do. I honestly think he doesn't know what he's going to do. He hasn't been told yet what he's going to do. Who's going to tell him, Joe? <laughs> well, you know, he pretty much appointed the whole Clinton cabinet, so, uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine on that one. Well, when Clinton left, you had a, a, a record surplus, and uh, you don't now, do you? Well, you know, Clinton enjoyed the heyday of Ronald Reagan. You know, you, you take office, anything you do doesn't necessarily take effect in the first four years or even the first eight years that you're in. So Clinton really enjoyed what Reagan built. Now, Clinton pretty much, you know, you know did his thing and, and, uh, and didn't take care of his watch. You know, a lot of uh, what happened with 9-11 can be actually directly uh, laid at Clinton's feet. Uh. <laughs> we'll not get into an argument about that, Joe, but let me make a prediction. You've got a political future as part of the American right. Joe the Plumber, Joe Wurzelbacher, thank you for joining the mother of all talk shows.